<rire> ah, c'est live YouTube. Mm -hmm. Alors, on... <rire> More pressure. <rire> So I can see uh, the other lectures on YouTube. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, I didn't know. And, and also on the Polytechnical website. Okay, I will check. Okay. Okay. Possiamo cominciare. Okay, so welcome to everybody to our last uh, but not least uh, ACC lecture. Today we've got our cherry on the cake, that is uh, Maxence Bonn from the Collective Etc. Uh, and uh, as usual, I will do a little introduction of our guest, special guest, and then I let uh, Max uh, uh, deliver his lecture to us. So uh, about the Collective Etc, um, they, it was born in Stras Strasbourg, in 2009 because of the need and I would add the uh, enthusiasm uh, to find new collective answer uh, to the use and to the project of the public spaces. Uh, the collective is a multidisciplinary team that experiment uh, to put in practice and horizontal governance uh, both for uh, the public space and for their own internal organization. Uh, as I always say, they are concrete dreamers. Um, and in 2011, they experiment a great trip, the, the Tour de France, that was a bike trip uh, around France with the focus um, on citizen can build the city. And the same year, they won the European 11 and they get the Palmares, Palmares des Jeunes Urbanistes. And so they are keep continuing experimenting their horizontal vision uh, of the use of the city and the collective um, work, sharing their knowledge with other realities in Europe. So I hope uh, I haven't said too many betise. So Max. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you for this uh, invitation. We are very honored to be here with you guys. And uh, unfortunately, I'm alone today because all my uh, other colleagues are busy with uh, a ton of uh, project to, to do, to do. So I hope I, I will manage to do it by myself, but uh, I prepare a little uh, document that I can share with you right now. Okay. Perfetto. So, so. Here we go. So, uh, you said a lot already, but uh, so collective PTSD. Um, so we are uh, today and we were from the beginning a group of architects and uh, we imagine us as a, also a group of builders. It was very important from the beginning to say that as an architect, you can uh, think, but you also can make and you can build. And uh, so the story began uh, in the, the School of uh, Architecture of Strasbourg in uh, 2010, where we were 20 people interested in doing, uh, in uh, creating projects uh, in parallel of our education at schools. So we began to create some little project in the public space altogether in an artistic approach. And uh, we felt directly that when you are acting in the public space, it's involving uh, all the people around. So people who are just passing by, inhabitants who are asking for what you are doing. So. At this time, we knew that uh, this problematic of how you involve people inside the conception process and the building process of projects were something that we want to seek uh, for our practice. So after the degree, 12 of us, we decided to, 
we work in two studios, but uh, we decided to stop it and to have a one year uh, time just to voilà, to make a, a big project of one year. Um, uh, we volunteer for this, and uh, we decided to to go by back around France in order to with two objectives. The first one was to make projects, to do to do projects in villages or urban centers in cities, depends, and to meet uh, all the actors or stakeholders who were working on this uh, topic of uh, the citizen fabric of the city. So after this uh, one year trip, we all together decided to continue this uh, nice story in a professional way. And uh, thanks to all these uh, meetings of all these groups we made, we, we tried to imagine a, a structure for ourselves. So we decided to create an association and we decided to have a, an horizontal approach of uh, the management of the association. So everybody has the same power. We were, we were 12 at this time. Everybody uh, has to lead project. Everybody has to uh, communicate about the project during lectures. Everybody has to work around uh, all the administrative uh, work. So we decided uh, this very horizontal approach of uh, a group. And uh, that's why we called us a collective at this time, because it was important for us, this horizontal approach. Uh, since then, uh, we made a lot of projects uh, around France and Europe, and uh, the story continued. Uh, uh, at first, we, we continued to make a, a public space project. Uh, so how with a different type of subjects like empowerment, how you can deal with uh, uh, inhabitants needs, how you can uh, work with inhabitants in order to make project and after to speak with architects or uh, people who are in power, like uh, uh, people from the cities or stuff like that. It was very important to us to, to think about, uh, to build project, uh, bottom project. So we continue to do this kind of project. Uh, during 10 years now. Uh, all these projects uh, were very various in type of uh, duration, budget, objectives, and type of contractors. So for example, uh, for 10 years, we work in, in big projects with a lot of budget, and we also decided to work with, in projects with no budget, but uh, with uh, a lot of uh, subjects that we were uh, we were deeply, deeply involved in at, the, at that time. So I can show you a few projects we made uh, the last uh, two years that can show now what type of project we are leading. So the first one is a public space in Paris, in the Place de Panthéon. So the municipality of Paris asked architect and collective architects to rethink seven big places in Paris and we won two places. And uh, this is a, a work that we made for two years with a lot of uh, actors in Paris. And uh, for us, it was a, a big experiment because we hired people who lived uh, and uh, who worked on this place for two years and a half in order to gather all the information during all the process of the project. So here you, you see uh, the, final, uh, the final construction, but for us, it was more important Sorry, all Max. the process. Yes? Uh, I think we, we, are not, uh, we are not able to see exactly what are you talking about. Maybe ah. you need to put the full screen um, option. I, I, I mean, full screen option. Try to switch off uh, the screen and then the share screen. Okay. I can try again. 
Do you see me? I see you, yes. Okay. Okay. Do you see the images? Mm -hmm. We see the image number six. Yes, okay. So this is uh, the public space we, we built in Paris with uh, reuse and recycle materials. So it is a three years project. We finished in December, 2018 after three years, three years uh, project with uh, 600,000 euros budget. So it, it's one of our big uh, project in terms of uh, scale and in terms of budget. And we have, at this time, we had to deal with the municipality of Paris that it's uh, an inst institution and uh, it's important also for us to deal with this kind of uh, contractors in order to understand how we can uh, work all together. Another project is, uh, is a, a, a different type of project. It's a micro architecture. So now in the collective ETC, we, we are very into, uh, it's working. We are still in Paris. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Let's retry. It's the beauty of the of being direct. It's what maybe I can uh... see. Okay, now I think it, it took the full uh, screen. Try to go back and forward. Six, seven. We are on seven. Yes. See, okay. Try and to go. Eight. No. Okay, I can. Uh... Or you can put the mode where you scroll down. Yeah, I will try it. Okay, do you see it? Yeah. Six, seven, eight. Oh, we have seven, eight. Okay, yes, it's a okay. bit uh, uh, slow. delay. Delay, yeah. Okay. Va bene. Va bene. Allora, uh, so as I said, we are uh, now into, we, we are making various type of projects. So we still uh, make some public space projects, but we also are, uh, uh, interested into architecture and uh, conception and construction of uh, little macro architecture. Uh, so for example, this is an example of uh, a Belvedere we, we built in uh, 2016 with uh, local and uh, recycled materials in the Alsace, in the north of France. We also uh, try uh, various, another, part of architecture. It's more uh, designing and uh, scenography. So we were lucky to be part of a team uh, who win the scenography for the French pavilion for the Vienna of architecture in 2018. Uh, for us, it was uh, uh, the important because it was the first time we had the possibility to make a research around uh, like I said, uh, furnitures and uh, scenography, and uh, you don't see it very well on this photo, but every, everything is made from uh, uh, recycled materials used for the previous exposition. So it was a, a one month and a half project in Venezia, and for us it was a, also a, a new moment in order to seek and to make some research inside designing process and scenography processes. And the last project I want to share with you is like we decided to, to make a, uh, a project of uh, individual houses for a private contractor uh, in the little village in France. And uh, in this project, well, we, we thought it was interesting. It's to develop uh, an ecological, how you can develop an ecological uh, house from the concession to the realization. So it's a three years uh, project. We are, we start in 2018 and now it's still ongoing. We didn't finish the house. Everything is made with local materials. You can see here, scrubble uh, materials. 
So it's another part of uh, what we are doing in Collective ETC right now, more on uh, as an architect uh, than, uh, than before. Um, but uh, all the time with all our project, we uh, generally, we, we are very into this uh, idea of how you can improve the living environment with people. So for the most of our projects in public spaces, we try to think how we can integrate the local population in the creative bottom up processes with uh, various uh, tools we use for, for the last 10 years. So uh, one of uh, our main tools is uh, to create a, a building moment. So a chantier, cantiere aperto, uh, building site open that uh, permit us to invite people on it, on these sites and uh, to show them the strengths of the making process. And uh, for us, it's more important the process than the, the, the results in this kind of project. And uh, so sometimes it's one week, two weeks, three weeks, depends on the project, but it's one of our main uh, tools is to build all together around the project in order to build, but also to speak about the project and to gather people around uh, these moments. Uh, in some of our projects, we also use a tool the storytelling tools. You are, it's not working. <laughs> now it's working better. Sorry to interrupt you. Yes. Um, please, just a, a little thing. Can you see the little, uh, la flèche, petite flèche, um, uh, un, vertic un, un vertical de l'autre côté? Um, pour serrer la, cette barre. Ah, oui. la, la voilà. Quasi. Si. Okay. Ah, voilà. <laughs> Grazie. <laughs> yes, uh, so we use storytelling as a tool. It's very important for us to, to tell stories uh, and to imagine a new environment in some of our projects. For example, here you see, we had to work on the new public spaces, but from the start, we are talking about, we have to build a rocket and to send it into the sky and uh, from this story, we invite people to help us, but at the end it was in order to, to build a public space. So uh, for us, uh, the power of storytelling is very important because it's another way to bring people and to dream all together around stories and around, pro uh, around the real project. Um, so uh, on our... Uh, various project, we are now using various tools. So of course we are builders, wood, uh, metal, uh, iron, concrete, but we, for years now, we are also discovering new tools, more graphic tools. So you can see here a serine graphic tool. And uh, we are also using a video camera, sound, podcast. And uh, for us, it's also a way to discover a new way of, uh, uh, around our project and so it's a, a way also for us to continue to learn because uh, we are discovering every on every project uh, with people who are around us new way of doing new tools new creative tools uh, and uh, also it's important for us to to when we can do it around our project to bring, to collaborate with uh, more people than us because uh, we are architects and urban planners inside Collective ETC. And so it's an, we need and we want to have around us more people with uh, different skills. So you can see here, it's a cineast a video maker who work with us uh, on several projects and uh, who bring his knowledge and his technical uh, uh, and uh, his materials in order to help us and to participate to the project again in order to to create for example a movie and the movie will bring more people around the project so uh, this was the part of 
all the project we are doing uh, for the last 10 years and uh, we are lucky because we choose all the time the project for the subject and for the research part and not for, for the money. So we still continue to do this. And uh, all of our projects are in France and few are in Europe right now. So we are continuing to do, the, to do this. And there is another part of our story, Collective ETSA, that uh, for, uh, from 2010, we start to, be, to have a nomadic life for four years with two, 12 people. We were all living together, working together. It was a, a very strong moment. But uh, after four years, we had the need to go and to, to set up into a city in order to, be, uh, to have a long-term project in a neighborhood and to be uh, uh, an inhabitant as well. And um, after a few discussions, we decided to settle in Marseille in 2016. And uh, we find a place, an old garage, we transform in a, in a poor uh, neighborhood in Marseille. And we created a place called uh, L'Ambassade du Turfu, uh, where we can have our offices. It, it was a place uh, we shared with uh, other creative groups. We, we were uh, 15 people at, the, at that time. And uh, the project was to uh, so have offices for us, but also to be open on the neighborhood and to offer uh, a new place for all the association or inhabitants uh, who, were, uh, who need a place to do uh, stuff. So for example, you can see here, it's an exposition. So we allow uh, every year uh, some groups to use the space in order to make exposition. We are also doing uh, uh, cinema uh, pro projection every month, uh, since three years now. Uh, we are working with local association and helping them in their project also. We are organizing sewing, uh, building and serigraphy workshop in, in, order to, in order to show to these people new tools and uh, that they, they can use uh, by themselves after. So for us, it's a, a kind of uh, empowering people uh, and to help them in their project. We also, uh, for one year now, we also have the need of a more bigger, bigger place and a workshop place where we can, uh, where we can uh, continue to build and test uh, construction around materials. And uh, so we find an old, uh, an old uh, former factory Westland near from uh, our offices and uh, we share this space with uh, 60 people now, and uh, it's uh, eight groups, eight associations, and uh, for us, it's a very use. Uh, it's a tool. Uh, it's another tool that we can use for our project, and uh, sometimes we organize also workshop in these places, inviting inhabitants to experiment uh, uh, other building. Uh, moments around the wood, iron, concrete, etc. Uh, when we arrived in Marseille, we also decided to open uh, and to create a publishing house because uh, at that time we want to create a book around uh, our first project uh, of the Tour de France uh, by bike. Uh, nobody wants to help us to publish the book. So at the end, we decided to create our own publishing house called Hyperville. And now uh, it's still ongoing. We are, create, we are working with uh, various uh, actors in order to produce fanzines or books. So it's another part of our work that is very important because it's, uh, it's more uh, the research part where we can uh, write articles uh, share knowledge with uh, other groups. Um, and uh, we also created a, a, an online platform uh, dealing with uh, all the, these uh, problematics of uh, involving inhabitants around projects and uh, all the bad 
political situations in France regarding uh, urban planning, etc. So the online platform is also called uh, Iberville. Uh, that's it. And uh, after uh, one or two years in Marseille, we had a strong network in the town because we met a lot of uh, various associations. And uh, with them, we share uh, this, uh, this uh, value of, uh, of uh, how we can live together, uh, how we can build all together our public spaces, our inhabitants can have their word and uh, can be actors also. And uh, we began to, to be part of some social movement that uh, appears in France for the last uh, four years. And we help uh, again local associations, giving them uh, uh, tools in order to organize, for example, uh, public space debate. You can see on this uh, image, we built uh, a little uh, agora in wood with them. And uh, this agora now permits to organize this kind of uh, pirate event in the public space. So we are very uh, now into this. Uh, political situation uh, uh, in France, because at first uh, collective were uh, more, uh, we want to discover all the possibility we had to work in France around public space. But now after 10 years, we are more, uh, we careful about uh, with, with who we want to work and uh, in which situations. Uh, and for example, uh, two years ago in Marseille, uh, a studio of architecture proposed us to work on a, on a big uh, public space in the center of Marseille. And we said no, because we prefer to be on the other part with all the local associations who are not agree about the renovation of this place. So for two or three years, we start to have a, a politic uh, vision of uh, our work. And uh, we start to write some uh, to write some text about this, and and to also to to struggle against uh, how nowadays politics and private uh, real estate contractors are making the city. But we think that it's not a good way, and we have to struggle uh, this vision. And uh, we have also to bring another vision of how we want to make uh, the city with inhabitants. So we are more and more and more politi uh, uh, politicized inside Collective FTC and it's uh, another big part of our work nowadays. So um, another, another thing to, where we put some energy was to create a wide network. So thanks to the Tour de France, we, make, we met 100 people uh, 10 years ago working around these uh, problematics. And now we are more and more. So 10 years ago, we made the first meeting of all these people that we called uh, Superville. It's a super town in English. And uh, from then, it's, uh, we organized uh, with a lot of various people and other groups, uh, five meetings every year or every two years in order to, to share uh, our uh, knowledge, to share our history and to find uh, solutions maybe, and to speak about our project. It's uh, very important to us to continue to feed this network in order to to gather all the little groups who are doing this in France. And uh, the main objective is to have more power uh, against uh, the government or, or some municipality or some institutions. Uh, so we continue to organize this kind of uh, reunion uh, every year with various uh, subjects. And uh, we also try to do this at the European scale so from the start for us, it was very important to have a clear communication about our project, uh, to have a clear website where we write uh, everything we can uh, about our project and to share it with uh, 
all the people we also meet during our trips in Europe. So we continue uh, today to meet and to participate to lectures in various cities, uh, in various countries of Europe, because it's very important for us to continue to spread the word and to creating uh, an uh, European network. That's why uh, last year we met uh, some uh, other, other collectives and uh, for the last months, we decided to create a big project called the School of Commons. Um, it's a project where we, to resume it, it's uh, how you can uh, bring uh, a school, a collective of architects and a local community working together around uh, a local projects for the local for the society for for the citizen or inhabitants. So we call it a school of commons. Uh, and for years now, collective ETC is working with a school of architecture, so or art or design schools. And uh, we think it's very important also to work with students and to to bring some uh, political and uh, uh, societal uh, intelligence inside their curriculum and to bring the students into real projects in uh, real sites dealing with uh, real people with uh, real problems. So this uh, School of Commons uh, start, the idea start when we met uh, Horizontale with a famous Italian uh, uh, collective of architects of Roma, who were working with uh, La Rivoluzione delle Sepie uh, in south of Italy around uh, the renovation of a old uh, house in a little village. So for three years now, they are working uh, in order to transform these uh, buildings and to permit the local people, inhabitants, to use it in order to make uh, various projects. And from, this, from the beginning, they also invite the University of London of Architecture to participate to the project. So for three years, students from uh, London came and they start to make a project. And uh, we hope they invite us to, to be part of the project uh, this year. So for us, it's a, it's a very important uh, project right now because it's bringing a lot of subjects we want to develop for the future. And uh, so we will do that also in Greece uh, with uh, the University of Athens and another collective, uh, Spanish collective called Zulork. But we also are developing this idea of School of Commons in France. And uh, you can see on this uh, photo, uh, there it's an uh, old uh, factory wasteland at, uh, in the little village in France. And there is a, associ a lo local associations who are who wants to develop a project inside, inside this uh, building, but they didn't know how to do it. So they asked us to help them to, to create a project with them. And uh, we also here propose to bring students inside the, the creation and the, and the construction of this project. So next year, we will uh, work with uh, students from uh, the Grenoble, Grenoble Architecture School and with this uh, local association in order to create a new project for, for this uh, whole factory. Um, uh, our story is uh, also moving a little bit because, uh, because uh, thanks to this uh, big project uh, in this little village in France, we decided uh, Collective ETC and with uh, uh, 10 other people to live there in these villages in order to be here uh, and in order to be more active and more present for this project. Uh, so we decided to, to move Collective ETC uh, in a rural area. So we passed from uh, Marseille, uh, a very huge city in France with uh, a lot of urban planning situations uh, 
inside that we deal uh, for we we did it for five years now and now we are more into we want to discover other subjects and other issues and more uh, linked to rural areas and uh, how nowadays uh, this uh, territory lose uh, inhabitants uh, uh, lose uh, interest of politics uh, there is no more money in order to develop projects in these villages. Uh, so uh, it's a new research. It's a new big project we want to do. So uh, we will buy this uh, old house. You can see on these images. We have a lot of uh, work to do because uh, this house is very old. And uh, we imagine this project as a new collective project with uh, 15 people. So, uh, with various skills and uh, various uh, ideas of uh, what they want to do. And uh, there is a, that's it, it's a forest, it's a, next year we will move it. And so we will, will be actors in a rural area and uh, I hope we can develop a lot of uh, projects uh, in this new territory. I also wanted for this uh, lecture just to, to say that uh, obviously we didn't uh, uh, invented all these uh, tools because uh, there is an history uh, and we are very interested about the history of uh, activist groups of architects who made projects before us and uh, in the various way, more political design on the political matter or more on the design matter or more, or more on the participatory, participatory, participatory processes. So I just want to share with you some of uh, our references that uh, build also our story and build our uh, collective intelligence uh, inside the collective ETC. Um, so I will start with the uh, architects. So here it's uh, Hans Walter Müller who developed uh, all his life because now he's uh, very old, he's uh, 90 years old. He developed uh, all his life in flatable structures. And uh, for us it was a, it's a main reference because he see architecture as an event and uh, as a temporary moment. Uh, a lot of times people ask us about uh, the duration of our project and uh, it's um, depending of the project it's a very important things to discuss because does architecture has to last uh, decades uh, can we imagine project that can change every year and for us it's a, a topic that we are uh, discussing on every project every time so this guy is a strong reference around this uh, idea of uh, architecture as an event. Uh, another architect group is Encore Heureux from France. It's a studio in Paris. And uh, for 10 years now, they are working around the uh, project dealing with uh, reuse and uh, recy recycling materials in uh, the construction of buildings. So we are very close to them. And uh, in our, um, most of our project, we try to have a reflection also on the, this idea of how we can nowadays think and use recycling materials inside our project. Uh, and another, the last uh, reference of an architect is an, uh, a old architect called Lucien Kroll, also from France. And for all his life, he worked on how you can involve inhabitants in the creative process of uh, the construction of a project and how with uh, some rules, clear rules, you can bring more people and more inhabitants to discuss and decide about designing a solution. So for example, you can see this facade and uh, this facade is uh, the result of uh, the discussions with uh, all the people who are living inside. So we call it a matrix uh, architecture and uh, we use it a lot inside uh, our project is how you, from some rules, you can uh, bring more people into the 
the decision project uh, process of the project. Now I can just briefly present you some uh, reference about uh, Collective of Architects. Like I said, we are not the first ones. There is uh, collectives who are working on uh, the same topics and problematics for years now. So, so here we have uh, Le Bruit du Frigo in France, who also work on the same topics, uh, sub same subject as us. And uh, they are more like our uh, big uh, brothers and sisters. Here we have uh, Raum Labor from uh, Berlin, who work also for 15 years around micro, micro architecture, like you saw here in uh, this uh, sauna, but they are also working around more uh, big scale projects, one year project, bringing a lot of uh, people around their, their project and debating around a lot of subjects also. Uh, here we have an uh, exist, that's a collective uh, from uh, France and uh, England. And uh, for 15 years, uh, they work on this idea of how you can live inside uh, arch the architecture you make. So for each of their project, they every time propose to make a project on the public spaces and to live inside, to bring people inside and to share life uh, and to continue to build the project uh, together. So it's a huge reference also for us. And there is more contemporary references here. You can see Enorme Studio from Spain, who are now dealing with uh, public space structures and furnitures, also with the reuse and recycling the materials. And for us, it's a strong uh, Reference, references also because you can see uh, on these pictures uh, they are uh, making some uh, they put energy on the graphic design uh, process of the project of the coloring of the uh, various uh, materials textiles for example and uh, for us now it's uh, we we are looking for this kind also of uh, productions with new materials and the last one is a warehouse and Atelier Mog from Portugal, who are from Lisbon. And uh, they are working for years also in the same subject. And uh, here it's a, a community center that they built and they made with uh, the local community. So uh, again, it's a, it's a good references for us because of the politic involvement that uh, uh, collectives of architects uh, should and uh, have inside their project. Um, the last one is more to say that uh, we are interested about uh, urban planning and architecture, but we are also a uh, lot of references from the heart, uh, uh, the, the heart story and uh, so here we have a, a reference from a project from uh, Ensemble from uh, uh, USA and uh, it's a uh, long art and sculptures. And for us, it's a strong uh, image just to say that uh, as a, an architect, you also can build some, uh, some sculptures or uh, symbol, symbolic uh, projects that can uh, offer and can create some uh, sensations, new sensations also for inhabitants or for, or for, for people who are just uh, looking at it. Uh, the same, but inside and with the scenography uh, from, uh, this is a, a project from Les Frères Chapuza from France, who every time use simple wood plank and they build a new scenography that you can enter it and use it inside uh, various museum in Europe. And uh, so for us, it's also important to say that with a uh, low budget and simple materials, you can uh, create some living uh, structures in the most uh, institutional places uh, in Europe. Uh, this is uh, a reference from Forme Vive, a group of graphic designers in France. We are so very close to this kind of pra practice, graphic design, 
that brings a new possibility for our project uh, and for the storytelling and the communication of our project. And uh, on most of our project, we try to collaborate with a graphic designer who can bring his skills and uh, can bring another scale on the whole project. Here it's a image from a short movie that a friend of us made called uh, Family Attar. For us, uh, the movie, it's a very strong uh, tools that we want to, we, we used it for several projects and we want to use it again because uh, thanks to the movie, you can really, it's a very good tools to talk with people and to bring them to you in order to speak about the project. And so now we are, we want to, to create some project around uh, movies and short movies uh, for uh, the future. And for uh, the final uh, reference, I put uh, a project from Assemble from England who, who work uh, around crafting process and how from uh, knowledge, old knowledge of crafting, you can bring a new possibility for, for project. And it's a good example of uh, ceramic uh, crafting process uh, to a contemporary uh, project. And uh, as a collective, uh, inside the collective ETC now, we are looking for, uh, we'll, to form ourselves around these techniques, all techniques, so ceramics, serigraphy, and uh, and uh, another crafting uh, works uh, we want to learn for the our future project. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Max. Thanks for the energy shock. You, you give us with all these uh, this this dream, dreaming dreaming project. I'm sorry if you hear some noises from me, but I've got still some work around me, <laughs> and like like Max. <laughs> yes, I have the same. <laughs> I hope I'm not too I'm not bothering you. No, no, it's so, okay. Not not just you, everybody. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> So I think uh, um, that it's the moment for the, the two groups of uh, students that, have, that prepare the question for a collective, etc. So the group number four and group number 20. Let's start from group number four. So please, if you want, you can turn on your camera and mic. Yes, hi. Um, first of all, I want to say that thanks for your lecture and what I want to ask is um, as an architectural studio uh, do you foresee this participation phase is something that you organized before or uh, is something more uh, as an unplanned involvement is something more uh, as a natural involvement and this collaborative vision is uh, it's a methodology that you think is uh, is universally applicable to any project or eventually do you find some limits? Okay. Um, like I said uh, at the beginning for our, uh, of our project, uh, we think that uh, involving uh, people inside the project is very important in order for, her to, for them to understand the project. So of course the, the participatory process uh, has to be prepared and uh, you can just arrive like this and say to people, okay, come, uh, we will discuss the, about the project. You have to work on it before you, you are starting your project. So every, every time when we want to do it, we spend a lot of energy and a lot of time, a lot of time to meet inhabitants, to meet uh, local institutions, local associations, local schools, to explain them about the project, uh, make some mediation around the project in order that uh, when you will bring them on the site, when we will make the project, everybody know uh, what you, why you are here and uh, how they can participate. So uh, for most of our project, 
when we want uh, to implicate and integrate people inside the project, we it's a strong work to do. And uh, with a lot of energy, but we think that uh, if you do this, your project will be more uh, powerful for them because uh, if they are participating to the building process, for example, they will, uh, they will be close to the project and they will protect it in a way. So that's it. And after, um, of course, it's impossible to, to have a method because uh, every project is different. Every project has its own uh, context, social context, its own subjects. And uh, we never said that we have a, a strong method that you can apply every time. And uh, we don't want to do that because uh, for some projects, for example, uh, I, I show you the Belvedere in wood we, we built. There were not uh, inhabitants working with us at the, for this project. The, the people we gathered around this project were, were, were more craftsmen or professional, all professional working with the whole techniques. And uh, for this project, for example, we were 25, but they were not local inhabitants. So, and uh, we bring inhabitants at the end, for example. You can uh, bring uh, inhabitants around events, for example, uh, for some of our project, we are doing the construction part. And after we are organizing uh, like uh, one week, two week events in order to bring people on the site and to share with them some uh, ideas, some stories in uh, around more uh, cultural or uh, intellectual events. Thanks, thanks a lot. I, I don't know if I... Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You respond me. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry for my English. Eh? I'm French. <laughs> for being French, you've got a great uh, English. <laughs> <laughs> so please, uh, also, um, if there are other members of Group Four, please don't hesitate. Just turn on your camera and mic. Or also, we can move to Group. Uh, uh, 20. Ah, sorry, there is a, a question from group number four, um, Luca Malara. So he's asking you, um, do you think that your project have a time duration? Most of the time are temporary and movable elements. So which kind of relationship do they establish with citizen and users? So there are two questions. Uh, yes, the, the duration of our project is very a good question because uh, you have uh, it depends on uh, for, for it depends on the on the budget it depends for who you are making the project and uh, we made a lot of temporary projects but uh, the problem is not that it is temporary and it will uh, last uh, like uh, one year and after it disappear. Uh, because if you do it every year, uh, for example, if you, every year you are making a temporary project and that uh, people are uh, interesting and are acting around uh, every time around this project, you have an ongoing project every year with life, with ideas, with uh, changement, and uh, you can continue like this. So for us, it's not a problem of uh, temporary, but more about uh, for who and who will be involved uh, around the project you are building. So at first in Collective ETC, we were making some public space project with no local community linked to it. And uh, after a few years, we saw that it's not working because if you are doing a, pro a public space project where nobody will care of it or will uh, use it or will be transform it, it's not working. So now we try to find project with uh, association linked to the to the project so for example uh, we are working with uh, local inhabitants who are who want uh, the transformation of uh, new public spaces and they will be here every year you know and we can bring them tools and uh, these temporary pro uh, project processes can work because uh, they they can use it and they can uh, change it uh, every year. 
So we have this kind of project, but also now, as I showed you, we, uh, we are making projects for more years, like the Belvedere, it's more like five, five or seven years project. Uh, and for this one, for example, we decided with the contractors, we said, okay, with the budget you give to us, we can say that it's five years. And after five years, you can use it anymore. We will dismantle it and uh, you can make another project. So it's a second, uh, we have uh, now uh, this kind of project of more medium time duration. And now we are building a project like uh, the house or the renovation of uh, the whole factory that it's more uh, buildings, you know, with uh, more long time. So, but uh, yes, we, it's the duration of the project and the transitional urban planning is uh, always a, a very good subject for us that uh, in order to do a new place or new, for, for example, in Paris, to make a new place in Paris, you don't need 10 millions in one time. Uh, you can spend 1 million every year uh, in t during 10 years, for example, and doing transitional uh, uh, furnitures, for example. And for us, it's a, uh, very important because if you are doing this process, every year you are changing the project, every year you are involving people, every year you are making surprises. And this is the life of, a, of the public spaces, we, we think. That's it. Okay. Thanks, Max. Thanks. Also, Luca Malara, say thanks. Um, please go ahead, uh, guys, from the two groups, and then we will open also to other questions. So group uh, number 20, if you want to go ahead, please. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon. So um, my question is uh, about a temporary project two, and um, our question is uh, how many times does the, the team of temporary highlight the potential or a problem of a space, and how often does it lead to definitive project or rezoning? Um, I didn't uh, understand so well the question. You, you are asking about uh, how how many times people are uh, involving inside around the project. Um, and we see that uh, uh, you often deal uh, temporary project of regeneration, reactivation, transformation of a space, uh, and we ask. Uh, um, how many times the theme of temporary highlight the real potential or problem of a space and if uh, this temporary project lead to definitive projects in uh, the space. Hmm. Okay, I can uh, take one project to, to answer you. It's uh, the project we made in Paris uh, in the for the Place du Panthéon, because the idea is at the, at the, for this project from the municipality, municipality of Paris was you have three years to propose a project that can change during three years in order to, to experiment uses on the places, to change them if it's not working, to add other uh, possibility to the project during these three years. And at the end of these three years, you will discuss with the architect or the landscape designer or the urbanist in charge of the drawing of the place. And you will, you will, uh, you will uh, give them all the knowledge and all the experimentation you made in order to help them to, to design the, the last project. So, for us, it's, a, it's not the perfect approach, but it's a kind of, uh, we, we knew at this time that, okay, they are interesting 
to this question of experimentation in public spaces. And they think that maybe it can be a, a good way to go to the final uh, drawings after three years, you know. And uh, the most import uh, important uh, things we see in this project is that the community, normally uh, the municipality said, okay, you have uh, 10,000 euros to do this for two years. Okay, it's impossible with this money, okay. And uh, the municipality of Paris said, okay, we have 600,000 euros to do this for three years. So, it, so for us, it was a strong, uh, uh, strong uh, collaboration with the municipality. You said, okay, we, have a, we, we want to spend a lot of money for these experimentations. And during these three years, we change a lot of times the project. We change uh, uh, the number of uh, Ponkine, we change, uh, uh, at, at first, there were no trees, but after one year, all the inhabitants said, okay, we need trees, it's not possible, there is no trees in Paris. So we said, okay, we can uh, make, uh, we can uh, bring trees in order to test if it's okay to have trees. So after one year, we put uh, 50 trees and we work with the landscape designers. When we put the trees, the local in inhabitants around said, okay, it's not possible to, to put trees because we don't see anymore the building in front of our uh, uh, flats. And, you know, we, during three years, we, we continue this kind of experimentations. And I think uh, for me, for my part, I think one year, it's a, good, uh, it's a good time. You make a project for one year and at the end of the year, you make uh, an, an analysis of it. And you and you look if it's okay, what is not working, what is working, and you you change the you, you change your project. Okay. But it's it's just for this project. I as I said, for other projects it's very different. But for, for this project, it was like this. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Cla Claudia. And thanks, Max. Um, Please move on uh, if you want to, for the two groups uh, of students. Yes, hi. Hi. Um, regarding hi. the horizontal uh, democracy process, uh, how are the project uh, proposals of the community managed and chosen? And um, how are the various individual roles uh, or uh, tasks uh, divided? Uh, among uh, among inhabitants or among us as a professionals? Uh, for the, the profess professionist. So your question is how in a, in a horizontal and democracy project as a collective, we are uh, sharing uh, roles. Yes. Uh, okay. At first, when we started the collective ETC, we were 12 and uh, all 12 people were, uh, were participating to every project as an architect. So imagine that you have to make uh, the design of a furniture and you have 12 people working on it and arguing and uh, discussing and debating uh, around the the designing of the project. So it was uh, horrible. It was very long to have decisions. And uh, after uh, 10 years of experience, uh, now we, we have more, uh, we know that uh, inside the team, there is some guys uh, who are more into the conception, conception process. There are, there are people who are more into the social uh, discussion with inhabitants. Uh, so everyone has his uh, skills, I will say. So now uh, for a project, we, there is two, like a normal studio, there is two people in charge of the global uh, management of, of the project. And uh, all the time we are imagining a project where all the team will be present at one moment. So for, for all of our project, there is a, a cantiere, uh, aperto at one moment. And during uh, this uh, 
this uh, building moment, everyone is in charge of uh, one part of the project. And uh, during, uh, yes, everyone has to know how to build, has to know how to discuss with people, even if it's not uh, sometimes difficult. Everyone has to present the project well. Everyone has to uh, open the site and close it. So we are sharing uh, all the responsibilities uh, during the, the building moments. But uh, before, it's just two people who are leading the project because it's impossible to lead all the project all together. I don't know if I answer well to your questions. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you, Anastasia. And thanks, Max. Are there any other questions from the two groups? Yes. Hi. Uh, thanks no. for your lecture. Um, in, this, uh, in these circumstances, uh, given by virus COVID, how do you manage uh, or uh, plan to manage the, the community? So your work includes uh, the participation of uh, different players and direct collaboration uh, to workshop uh, seminars. And uh, we are interested to know if the, this situation has stopped uh, your creative uh, process uh, and uh, design. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. It's like, uh, as you can see, uh, this kind of uh, cantiere aperte as a, an event. Of, at, the, at the end, it's an event what you bring people to do something. So for us, it's a very difficult moment because uh, all of our projects are done, it's finished uh, for the year, unfortunately. Um, we wanted to go in Italy and in Spain and it's also impossible to do it. Uh, the project we are making with the local community in this little village in France, it's the only project we are, <laughs> Who, who survived and of course it's very complicated because we can't it's not possible now to bring people all together and to build all together so uh, it's a very difficult moment for us because we have to reinvent a little bit our methodology of approach of approaching a project so for example, as I said at the end, we are now working more and more with schools, for example, and uh, maybe uh, uh, becoming like not teacher, but uh, going into schools, uh, uh, be invited uh, as a assistant professor or this kind of uh, new, this kind of uh, practice. Uh, can interest us, but we hope that this situation will last not that more than one year because uh, if it does, uh, we are dead. So yes, it's a very, I, I have uh, some uh, friends who are musicians in the same, in the same uh, situation and uh, yes, it's very uncomfortable, but uh, we hope that uh, we can, it, it can be solved for September. We'll see. Thanks, Victoria. I don't know if you have other question. No. Max, yes, it's a, it's, it's a difficult moment for culture and arts. Yeah. yeah, we need to find a way to to recreate and to support. Um, so I've got another question for you, Mark, from uh, Simone Tolosano, and then another from Stefania Riccio. Um, Simone is asking, uh, we are so interested with this methodology. Probably we could say that with small and weak intervention, uh, we could produce huge socio-political effects. Considering also the heterogeneity of your collective, could we make a political interpretation of some intervention? Yeah. Uh, 
Um, it's a very good question. <laughs> um, like I said, uh, at first we were not uh, interested about political matter inside the collective FTC because we were all very different at the beginning. We just met uh, for one year and uh, so we didn't share our political vision at that time. And we prefer to not talking about it in order to to make project, to do project, to not discuss about them, but to do it and to experiment uh, them. And after a while to, to have a, a proper uh, uh, discourse, political discourse. Uh, now, uh, yes, I think uh, there, the project is not because it's uh, very huge that you, you will have a strong uh, effect. And I very, I'm very agree that uh, small and weak interventions can, probably, can produce huge socio-political effects. Like I said, we build uh, a little uh, arena, a little uh, agora, a mobile agora that uh, anybody can uh, take uh, in Marseille. And we see that this little agora create a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, discussions, gathering people inside public space, just with uh, like, uh, yes, a little agora. So we were very impressed about uh, this. And at the end, uh, the police came and they destructed it uh, uh, in front of uh, us. And I think it's showing that these little uh, modules can have a very strong uh, and a power effect on the, the political discussions we have uh, nowadays in France. And um, in the collective, uh, now, now we are all agree to have a more uh, militant and political posture uh, in what we are doing. But it is very recent for the last uh, five years that we are all sharing these uh, new values. And uh, now it's very important for us to say that we are struggling and it's a fight and uh, not to be happy. Okay, we are doing nice project with people and uh, everything is, is okay. Uh, no, I, we, we think that there is a huge, huge problems in our society nowadays. And uh, as a young uh, architect, we have to struggle and we have to say out loud that there is a lot of problems in social, ecological, democratic issues. And uh, we want to speak about them uh, loudly. So that's why we, are, uh, we want to write articles, we want to write books, we want to meet people, we want to, to make lectures, to go into schools, to speak about this. Uh, in order to make to be more efficient and uh, powerful for the future. Yeah. See, this is it. <laughs> Thanks, Max. And um, I move to the next question uh, from Stefania Riccio. Most of your project, whether temporary or not, are based on the concept of public and built in common. What are the strategies that can, adopt, that can be adopted beyond the workshop to involve and excite the community? In particular, um, if we talk about a difficult territory and hostile neighborhood, which strategy would you suggest? <laughs> yes, yes. we. We, we made a, a lot of projects in very, very, very poor neighborhood in France, uh, in Marseille a lot, and uh, with a lot of problems of drugs, of weapons, and uh, of social problems where people have no uh, windows, their flat, for example, and you are coming in the public space and you say, okay, we will all build a, a nice public space. And the people said, okay, but we don't have windows that are flat, so we don't care about your public space. So yes, it's a very, very difficult, difficult territory are 
very it's it's very difficult to approach it but you need time you need uh, that that's it if you have a uh, we make a project for two years and uh, we spend uh, one year and a half to talk with people about the project we want to do so it needs it needs to it needs to talk with people but also to yeah to to make them understand that they can be part of it, that can be actors, and they are not just asking and receiving a project. Because a lot of, also there is a lot of inhabitants who say, okay, I want this, okay, I want this, but they will not, they will not, did nothing to, to have it. So uh, in our team, we try to have discussion moments, but also little production moments can be the production of text, of uh, podcasts, of uh, interviews. It can be the production of little furniture, uh, a first step of painting. Uh, I don't know, but uh, every time you have to be in the discussion approach, but also in an active approach. And uh, in this kind of uh, hostile neighborhood, I think the only solution is to, to be here, to be present, to come every time you can and to have a methodology that uh, permits you to be present. And it's the same, I would say, the same problem in the rural areas. Because uh, it's also uh, hostile, uh, hostile territory uh, in France because every, uh, there is uh, a desertification of these villages in France. And uh, nowadays we see a lot of uh, project, artistic project or architectural or urban planning project uh with a few budget like five thousand euros and the municipality said okay we give you five thousand euros to to rethink uh, the, the village uh, for the future but the the group of artists of architects are coming just one time for one week and after they leave and it's finished and uh i think it's not working and in a uh, collective ETC at the beginning of our story we spend uh, one year in a little village at uh, 15 people in a, old, uh, in a old house in the center town of the project in order to, to think and to act on these problematics of uh, desertification. And after one year of being here every day, meeting all the people, we just started to have a connections with the inhabitants and, and just started to imagine some solution. And we had to leave. So, for me, it's, fair, it's a question of time, and time is also a question of budget. It's linked. So uh, I have no methodology, I have no strategies. It's uh, every time different, but uh, yes, it's uh, complicated also to excite, like you said, it, how you can excite the community, the community because they are dealing with more and more difficult pro uh, problems that you can imagine when you arrived. And uh, at the end, maybe you just help them to fix the window can be the best solutions at the end for them. So yes, uh, I don't know. Well, thanks, Max. Yes, it's uh, it's such great what you what you are explaining because it shows totally a different approach and method to the project, like like acting locally with, uh, with the contingency agent uh, that you have around you. Like uh, it's not a usual method. Like many, many group of architects or architects, famous architects just arrive and put their astronaut in a place and that's it. Mm -hmm. So it's not the time, it's no longer the time. So thanks Max for showing this. Uh, I've got uh, another question written here for you. And then uh, please, um, I open to everybody. If uh, everybody has any question for uh, Collective Etc. and Maxence Bonn, uh, go for it just after this uh, last question that I will go uh, to read. And also from YouTube, if you've got any question, please please write down and uh, we will report in the Zoom chat. Uh, so from Camilla Rondo, uh, Camilla is asking you, um, I was wondering just a simple question. You are a very young group. Thank you. <laughs> how, did you get, how did you get started? 
What advice would you give to young architects who would like to follow your path? Uh, yes, we, we, started, uh, we started at schools, uh, at school of architecture. We were, like I said, uh, 15 or 20 friends because we were at that time all living together in big flats in Strasbourg. And uh, so the story began the year with a friendship. And after we, it was at uh, our school, the architectural education we had were very classical. And uh, we, the 15 people were a little bit bored about uh, this approach of architecture of uh, just speaking about Le Corbusier, Jean Nouvel and uh, others. And we want to explore another part of the, of architecture and uh, of uh, social, social context linked to architecture. So we decided uh, during weekends to make projects and uh, to not go partying, but uh, imagining, imagining pro project, everybody give 50 euros to do it and you have a little uh, amount that you can buy materials and do stuff. So it, it began just like this, just because uh, we want to be all together and to be productive as a group and not just uh, drink a beer and smoke cigarettes. Uh, so luckily it worked for us because uh, we have now a, a, a nice story. But um, my advice is that uh, for us, it was a struggle. It was not easy. It was very not easy to, this is this nice story I tell you because, uh, for example, from from my perspective, I worked in in studios for two years, in order to also to understand. Uh, I think it's important to understand the world of architects in studios, because it's very difficult. For, my story was very difficult. It was very there is no social context every time I stayed in my chair uh, designing uh, plants on AutoCAD every year, every day. Uh, I had a, a very good uh, place in a very good studio, but after one year, I, I was, uh, it was very difficult for me. And so I have the need to, okay, do another stuff. So we began Collective ETC at night after my work uh, after 10, uh, 10 p.m., uh, uh, we were like six, six or seven uh, people from uh, Collective ETC working in Paris at that time. And after work, we, we went into flats in order to speak about what we want to do as a, as a collective. And we began to, to work until uh, early morning on various projects. And, uh, and uh, okay, so we start like this, and after we win one, pro we won one project. So we said, okay, we stop our work and we do this project. Of course, there was there were no money for us, uh, so we were volunteering, and uh, we volunteer for two years. For, so we didn't earn money. Luckily, in France, you have le chômage, who give you a little amount of money in order to survive. And after uh, this time of uh, chômage, we, we were with uh, zero money. <laughs> and we decided to leave all together 12 people during uh, three or four years. And we share uh, everything in order to earn money. So for example, we were like three or four per room in a little flat. Uh, we share uh, one uh, camera for everybody. We share one... Uh, one car for everybody. Uh, you know, it was a very community style of way of uh, living at that time. Who permit us, this, this way of living permitted us also to make projects. But uh, it just after four or five years that uh, we luckily have a, a salary for more work. And now it's uh, for four years now that we have uh, a thousand and three hundred euros per month uh, per person as a salary, and uh, and uh, yes, now it's uh, it's okay, it's cool. We have project, but at the beginning it was more. My advice is uh, if you are friends and if you are 
interesting in this kind of project, you have to be strong and to continue to continue to continue and to stick together. Because, uh, for example, I know a lot of groups that uh, starting together, but after a while they said, okay, I prefer to go to Australia to work uh, on a studio and me, I prefer to go uh, exploring uh, another part of architecture on my own in the south of uh, Italy and we'll finish. So yeah, it's very, it's very difficult to stick as a group for years uh, in the same direction. And uh, luckily we have uh, we had this, this, uh, this chance. Thank you, Max. As we say in Italy, alone you go fast, together you go lontano. È vero. È vero, sì. So uh, I think we are running out of time also because uh, today is uh, our last uh, ACC lecture. Um, so for the others, for the other students uh, here or on YouTube, if you've got any any other question, please just write an email to us, so and we will send uh, the questions to to the collective, etc. And so don't don't be worried. Um, I want to thanks first of all uh, Max and all the collective, etc. And um, really thanks to to bring bring us your uh, your your way to make uh, to to create actually concrete dreams because uh, he, now it's such a special moment uh, in the history in the world that we everybody needs to rethink about a new new approach to life to project and to and to 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 this world that we know how how it is and uh, environmentally, socially, all the struggle that we have around, so we cannot still have our eyes closed. We need to find new solutions and new approach and believe in them and not worry if uh, we have to pass through many struggles. And thanks, Max, to share uh, this point of view on the power of uh, community and, and uh, the collective uh, way to, to, to do projects and to share life. And if you want to say something, or then we... Thank you for this invitation. And uh, yes, we hope for... Uh, we are, we are uh, strong believers of uh, the collective approach of living and uh, working. So we will continue and uh, we'll see. Yes, we, we will be curious to see your... Uh... <laughs> Vedremo. Vedremo, sì. And, well, as it is uh, now, sorry, Max, we've got some uh, bureaucratic and technical uh, news. Uh, you can stay with us if you want. No, thank you. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have also things to do. Of course. <laughs> so... Um, uh, in order uh, to let everybody know how to, to deliver and to close this uh, ACC lecture cycle, we are all happy that you participate uh, uh, to all our conferences. And um, as you know, um, please remember that the deadline for the report, it will be the 3rd of July uh, and follow the layout given um, Yes, follow the layout given um, in when we start the cycle of conferences. And uh, uh, just to remember to achieve the three uh, CFAU, the, requ the requirements are the answer of the question that you have done during the lecture and the report of the lecture itself. So this is uh, just the requirement. But don't worry, we are saying now here, but then uh, we will send you soon an email with everything written down. And, and also for the question we have in the chat, we had in the chat, yes, if you sent us some emails uh, in the previous day, we will uh, answer you in the, in the next days, don't worry. Um, and uh, um, I don't know if the other cu curator of the of the cycle want to show up. 
Aurora, Tommaso, Ilaria. Everybody should show up, all the students. Uh, if yes, they want please, to. Let's, let's do this uh, big experiment. Let's see if, we, if Zoom is so powerful or not. Or we can let's make crash it. Let's, Zoom. Let, let's crash Zoom. Turn Don't, be your shy. Video. Don't be shy, guys. Yeah. Turn on your video. <laughs> Everybody is gone, Anno. Oh, wow. Thank you. Me. Thank you so much for uh, follow us. Uh, we will do it again. Maybe we will do some uh, extras. Uh, we don't know yet, though. Well, but, uh, as all the good cycle, uh, expect, uh, expect a surprise. So you will receive some communication. So sorry, I shut up, guys. I let you. <laughs> No, it's okay, I think. I don't know. Someone else wants to speak. You are beautiful, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a screenshot. <laughs> With the best one, Collective was the, one of the best, actually. So it's, uh, it's really good that we finish with you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Yeah. Uh, and thanks, thanks very much also to, to share not just your work, but also the works of uh, like your um, other collectives. It's important. There is a lot of collectives everywhere. Yeah, that was the most important thing that you share your experience. How did you start? Because uh, that was the, probably the, the means of this uh, lecture cycle, like so that all the students can see there is something to do. And uh, after the, the finish of the school, and you have to gather your imagination and uh, your will mm. to do it. So. <laughs> yeah. And there are not just the already traced path, but uh, it's, it's very interesting to create new ones. It's not easy, but is what is is needed now. Okay, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Mark. Bye, bye. Bye. Thank you to everybody. <laughs>